In the Excel file now in this ramen ratings raw list, and this contains all of our raw data for all our ramen ratings. So we have the review number, brand, variety, so on and so forth. And in this worksheet, I've created a pivot table based on that data. And if you see here, if I click on pivot table analyze and then go to change data source, you'll see that it references the Raman ratings worksheet from cell A1 to G2581. And in my pivot table, I just have style in the columns, country on the rows, and then I have an average of the stars to for, each, for the value so you can see what the average star rating is for all these different Raman, to, Raman products. Now the question is, let's say I have this, I want to add additional ROM ratings to my list of data. I want to add, let's say, rows 2 through 30 here from this extra worksheet I have. And I paste at the bottom of my main data source. So at the bottom of the data source is row 2582. If I do a paste and I refresh my pivot table in this sheet, it won't get updated with the new data because the data source is still going to be a1 to G2581, even though my data now goes all the way down to row 2610. So how do you make sure that when new data gets added to your worksheet, the pivot table automatically picks up the new references to that last row of data? So the first method is to simply change the data source. So I'm gonna pivot table analyze, change data source, and instead of making it A1 to G2581, I'm just gonna make it A to G. So I'm referencing the entire, the entire columns from A through G. So the reference now looks like Raman ratings, uh, exclamation point, dollar sign A, colon, dollar sign G. Hit okay. And the problem is, actually I was playing with this one earlier, but typically you'll see that when you reference all these, oh, and I have to press refresh the pivot table. Now, when I hit refresh, you'll see that the problem is, why isn't it refreshing correctly? Let's take a look, change data source, A through G. Yep, that's right. These blanks should show up at the bottom. Oh, here we go, this is why. So you notice that this there's a blank in the style here, and there's also a blank in the country here, in the rows. So there's a blank in the rows and a blank in the columns. And the reason why is because we're referencing a whole ton of empty rows in our source data from columns A through G. So if you want to remove these blank columns, then you have to click on the drop down here in the filter remove blank from the filter. Same thing with style. And then now if I add a new data to this, my source data, I'm just gonna pick some more rows of ROM ratings here. And I go here, add this here. So now my source data goes all the way down to 2636. If I refresh on pivot table, you'll see that some of this data now includes that new data. And that's because the source of this pivot table now references every single row in columns A through G. Now this, I would argue that this solution pretty much works for most, for most use cases because this Excel file is pretty basic. We only have one data source, which is this Raman ratings worksheet. I'm probably not updating it too often. So I'm okay with kind of like hiding the blank item in my rows and columns because yeah, there's a bunch of like empty rows, like probably hundreds of thousands of empty rows, but I'm okay with like just hiding that for now because I only have one pivot table. But if you have, I mean, this is probably for most of you, if you work in a corporate environment where you're working with a lot of big data sets and multiple data sets, you probably have multiple data sets in your Excel file, plus you have multiple pivot tables across many different worksheets. And so when that's the case, when you're copy and pasting this work, this, Excel, this pivot table 
to other worksheets, you're always going to have to remember that that the blank option is always has to be deselected. Now that's typically not going to be an issue, but let's say you're like clicking, playing with the country filter in this case, and I accidentally hit these, I hit select all because I want to do some specific filtering for my pivot table. You'll have to scroll all the way down again to the bottom and deselect blank to make sure that that blank option doesn't show up in your pivot table. So it's kind of not a huge issue again for most pivot table use cases. But again, there is a better method that will eliminate the need to remove that blank, but also give you the benefit of some other some other benefits for, for when you're working with a big Excel file with a bunch of pivot tables and a bunch of raw source data. So let's take a look at the, the second method, which is my preferred method, which is turning this ramen ratings table or list rather into an Excel table. So actually before I do this, I wanna get into the Google Sheets analogy or the similar operation in Google Sheets. So the same, I have the Google Sheets file here and I have all my ramen ratings <clears throat> in this tab, ramen ratings raw data, goes down to row 2581. Now my ramen pivot table here, I'm gonna zoom out just a little bit, this looks exactly the same. I have country in the rows and I have style in the columns. You notice how all I have to do to change the reference here is click on this cell reference, delete the one, then move my cursor over, delete the 2581. And now my, my pivot table source data now properly references all of columns A and G in my source data here. So just like my Excel file, I'm just gonna add some additional data here to my, my Google Sheets. Just copy this for now. Whoops, copy this. <clears throat> I'm gonna paste it at the bottom of my Google Sheets here. And if I go back to my pivot table, this will automatically update. Now this is one of the benefits of Google Sheets that I really like is that I don't have to right click and then refresh the pivot table. As data is added to my source data, my pivot table in Google Sheets will automatically refresh with this new data. Now I have no idea why Google, like Excel doesn't have this functionality built in, like it's 2021. I mean, I know Excel has these other options where you can like, you can like click on pivot table, analyze and click on options. And you have this option to refresh data when opening file, which is like, okay, but it's not still not perfect. And you can also like, I think update your pivot tables like in an interval where it's like every 10 minutes refresh your pivot table. But why not just keep it super simple like in Google Sheets where it just constantly refreshes. And for again, this is solving most people's use cases where they just wanna see an updated pivot table with their data when they add new data to their source table of data. Um, yeah, I I think maybe Excel Online has ability to do auto refreshes, but for the desktop version of Excel, I think it probably has something to do with like the the pivot cache or performance issues. But Excel pivot tables just don't auto refresh when you add new data to the source data tab. Similar to Excel, you have to remove this blank row or blank item in the columns and rows. And the way to do that is you have to add a filter here on the right of the sidebar in Google Sheets. And I would just say country, showing all items, I would just deselect blanks. And I like how blanks is the very top, so I don't have to like scroll all the way to the very bottom of the list. And there you go, like I don't have that blank um, option anymore. So that is the first method. Now the second method is my preferred method, which is in Excel, I'm gonna turn my list of data, my Robin ratings data into a pivot, into a Excel table, which is a, which is different from a pivot table. I'm going to just press control T on my keyboard. You notice that like by default, Excel would just say, okay, like your data is in cells A1 through G2636, my table has headers, hit okay. And then Excel will turn your table data into this kind of like 
alternating row color table. The important thing here is if I click on the table and I go to table name in the top left, I want to rename this to ramen. And so now this entire table from cell A1 through G2636 is now named the ramen table. Now if I go back to my Excel pivot table and I go to pivot table analyze, change data source, and then you notice how here my location for the source is ramen ratings still A colon G. I'm just going to delete that source and just write, write equals ramen because ramen, this, this is actually a table name, also defined name, that references my entire table data from A1 through G2636 or whatever. I hit OK. And nothing's going to happen to the pivot table, but in the background what's happening is when I refresh, it's basically pulling whatever data is being referenced in that ramen table name. So if I just add like all this data here, I'm just going to add all this data from uh, this X, these extra ramen ratings to the bottom of my now Excel table in my source data, I'm going to now add to row 2637. Notice when I press Command V, paste, Excel automatically picks up that this new data being added to my table is kind of like still a part of my table. So it auto expands the reference to include this new data. And you can tell by the alternating row colors that are in the, um, in the rows. And if I go back to my pivot table and I refresh this, this will automatically pick up all that new data because the Excel table and my raw, and my source data already properly references all the new rows of data I add. So it's not like overshooting to row like, you know, 1 million now, which is what I had before when I referenced columns A through G. It only references up to cell row 2774 because the table that I created here called ramen will automatically pick up new rows up until the last row of data. So it makes it much more efficient and you don't have to worry about deselecting the blank option anymore in your column or rows filters because your data will automatically be properly referenced, which is really, really awesome. And there's so many advantages of turning the Excel table or turning your main source data into an Excel table. Um, I just mentioned the first thing is you don't have to deselect the blank in the rower column filter, which is really nice, especially when you're copying and pasting pivot tables into new worksheets. You don't have to worry about like, oh, like do I have that blank selected or deselected? Just know that your pivot table is always gonna be referencing the proper data in your source data table. The, what I also like is the easy, the readability of the table reference. If I, click on, if I click on pivot table analyze and click on change data source, like I'm not looking at some crazy like, I mean, it's not crazy, but I'm not looking at a huge refer cell reference like ramen ratings A1 through G5000. You know, it just says equal ramen, which is the table name. So it's like using a variable to replace a cell reference. And you can still see like in your Excel file where the data is being referenced. And then finally, if you have multiple, this is for, again, if you're working with many different data sources on many different worksheets with many different pivot tables, you want to see all of your data sources in one place. If you go to data in the ribbon, then go to, sorry, go to formulas and then go to define name, you will see a list of all your defined names and also your tables in one place. So you can see like all your kind of quote unquote data sources that are hidden behind these variables. But you can also see the range of cells that the table or defined name references in case you really need to see like what data is, re is referencing. So having a list of all these names in your Excel file would be really helpful when you have multiple data sources that you need to like push into different pivot tables in your Excel file. Now, what's the story with Google Sheets? So unfortunately, there is no Google Sheets equivalent of Excel tables, which really sucks. I think they'll eventually get to parity with Excel. Like I don't understand why they don't have this feature when it's one of the, in my opinion, a core feature in Excel. My thinking is that they'll eventually build this feature and to get feature parity with Excel. But for now, you still have to do this kind of workaround, which is method one, which isn't a terrible workaround, which is just referencing the entire columns 
A through G in my source data. And if I had to be honest, like I think the fact that the pivot table automatically refreshes without having me without me having to like right click and then go to refresh or going the ribbon and refresh like I'd have to do in Excel, that simple feature in Google Sheets outweighs the benefits of using tables in Excel, in my opinion, for Excel tables for most use cases. I have to put that caveat for most use cases. For the more advanced use cases where you have multiple data sets, like having the defined name or the table table name is probably a bigger benefit than having to refresh your pivot tables manually with right-click refresh. Um, Having said that, there are some hacky workarounds you can use with like the filter function, the offset function, the count a function, count a function to properly reference the data up until the last row of data in your source data here. But I'm not going to get into it because at that point, you are kind of doing some really big hacks to get the data right. And also, it may not be too performant for larger data sets, which can be a problem in a Google Sheets when you see that loading bar happen in the bottom right of your Google Sheets. So that is my that is the quick kind of a tip on how you should be structuring your source data for pivot tables, just turning it into a table of data. And then every subsequent new addition of rows to your source data table will automatically get quote unquote picked up in your new pivot table here um, when you refresh it.